If you have a smart home, then you know that you can never have too many sensors. And today we will be looking at this a bit different presence sensor. We'll check the Smart Life support, ZHA support and also ZigBee to MQTT. We'll start in a couple of seconds. What motion sensors were a couple of years ago, present sensors are today. Everybody needs them, everybody has a great use case for them, but there are also tons of options on the market and the question is for what sensor you should go. So far I have reviewed a couple of them and each has its own niche, be it the size, the price or the functionality of the device itself. Today we'll be looking at this one from Limtech that was sent to me free of charge to do a review video on it if I find the device interesting. And I did, but there are some quirks with it and we will talk about them later in the video. For all of you that do not know what the presence sensor is, the difference between the presence and the motion sensor is that presence sensors should detect objects or people pets in the room even if they are standing still or sitting down or lying in the bed. Motion sensors can only detect motion, so that's the biggest difference. Also, a lot of presence sensors pack additional functionalities in themselves, besides just motion or presence sensor. It can be lux, temperature, humidity or some additional sensors like the one I will be covering in the future, such as CO2 sensor in the presence sensor. What is great thing about this Olympic sensor is that price is just about right. If you go on the Amazon web page and try to find it there, you will find it for around $35-$36. But there are also additional options and don't forget to check down the link because you can also find it on the AliExpress for about 20-30% to lower price than this one here. So there are options and you can shop around to see where you can find the best deal for it. As with all other present sensors I have covered and probably will be covered in the future, this one also has a USB-C connector, which allows you to plug it in via the very long wire or not so long wire that you receive with it and hook it up to the power supply. For all my tests with all those sensors, I either use them hooked directly to my PC, which has a 8 port USB hub, or I use external power bank to power them. But if you, for example, have a mobile charger that has more than one port on it, you can hook it up there. That's also something that I'm using to power some of my devices. If I remember, I will also be leaving a link down in the video description for one of those chargers that I have. I think it has either three or four USB ports on it. Let's talk about missed opportunities. The device itself is very nice, it's not that big, it has one LED that you unfortunately cannot control and also part of that LED is the switch button on the right side of that plate where you press and hold for 5 seconds to put the device in the pairing process. And I will be doing it a couple of times in this video to test it with Smart Life, ZHA and also ZigBee to MQTT. But where is the issue? The issue unfortunately is the back plate. You can tilt the device up to 45 degrees, you cannot tilt it more because it will start to unhook from the device itself and it's using magnets for it. I think that they could have used stronger magnets. There are stronger magnets than this one here. During my testing it never fell, but I feel that there is a potential for this to be detached from the magnet or magnetic backplate. The good thing about the device is that it also has a lux capability. I think that this device will be permanently attached to my recording desk. And in future I will create automation, well actually we can do that later in the video, create automation whenever I sit on the table it will start the LED strip behind my table. This is something that I rarely do, but also one additional thing that I can implement in automation is to check the light sensor. And by combining this present sensor and the light sensor I can have my lights turn on, not those big lights but LED strip, whenever I sit at my desk. And this combo of presence sensor and light sensor is something that I really do appreciate. In terms of the distance, it can measure up to 6 meters. I didn't test it in such environment, I did test it to maximum around 3-3.5 meters and I find it very accurate. Also what I found very accurate was the response time. But let's now start adding it to our systems. For start, we will be using Smart Life. You should already have Zigbee Hub added to your Smart Life. If the Zigbee Hub has been connected and visible inside Smart Life, click on it and click Add Subdevice. Start the pairing process on the device by clicking and holding the button for 5 seconds 
and after it has started blinking, click on LED already blinking. It will take a couple of seconds for the device to be discovered, and actually this is it. You now have a sensor added to your smart life. If you go on the details page, you will see information. For example, currently state of the sensor is present, meaning that somebody is here. You can set motion detection sensitivity, motionless detection sensitivity, distance for the sensor, and nobody time. Nobody time, yeah, I know the language in the app is Google Translate, I don't know what, but the nobody time means that you can set how long to wait before there is no detection on the sensor, before it declares that the room is not occupied. You can check also illuminance value, you can look at historical values in the app, and same goes for the presence record, to see if and when was the last time somebody triggered it and when the room was not occupied. Note that presence time here works really nice. This is something that we will be also looking at in the Home Assistant integration. I've already mentioned the current distance and it really is more or less very accurate. And it was more accurate than some other sensors I've tested. If we click on more information, we can look at device information, if there are any scenes added to it, and information about the firmware or is it running the latest firmware or not. And that's more or less it with the Smart Life app. Of course, you can now create automations, notifications, whatever you normally do in Smart Life. I don't use the Smart Life app except for testing of new devices. And I do try to test every single device that I receive with the original manufacturer's app and then hook it up to Home Assistant with both ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. And there are differences. Let's check the ZHA integration. In your Home Assistant, inside Zigbee Home Automation or ZHA, Click on Add Device and of course once again put the device in a pairing mode by clicking and holding the button for 5 seconds. The pairing process should be very fast, device is detected, initialized and ready for use. Select an area and that's it. And this now unfortunately is also an issue. I did mention a couple of quirks at the beginning of video. Well, there is problem with one quirk and this is a custom quirk or support for this device inside ZHA it is getting picked up by some alternative integration and it looks like this device is not fully supported inside ZHA. If you have time and wish to play with it, you can try and create custom quirk that would pull other attributes from the sensor because they are available. So if you are using ZHA, you will not be able to see anything here, just the state. Is the device on and off? And that means that there is a presence or no presence in the room which is a bit unfortunate for all of you using ZHA. But as you all know, I prefer Zigbee to MQTT because it has much broader support and more devices are supported. This video has been recorded on the day that usually Zigbee to MQTT releases a new release. This is usually first day of the month, so 1st of November. The new release is still not out. The official support for this LinkTech sensor was not present in the version previously but it should be available in the next release. It is currently available in the Edge release. And why am I saying that? Because when I was adding the device, I had to resort to GitHub, search there to see if anybody has added support or not. And I've seen a long thread with a lot of posts from Aaron from Make It Work. And if you haven't already subscribed to Aaron's channel, the link to it will be also down in the video description. He's an awesome guy and he's currently working on one very interesting video and that is the difference or comparison between multiple sensors. And when I say multiple, I think that there are like 20 or something sensors, present sensors for Home Assistant. So check him out. But back to this. So the support was not available, but since the community for Zigbee to MQTT is more alive than ZHA community, in my opinion, somebody has also prepared the custom quirks or custom support for this sensor. And after reading a lot of comments, information, blah, blah, blah here, I managed to find a custom converter Then I used in my install of Home Assistant. And by the way, if you need custom converter anytime in the future and find it on the GitHub repository that has still not been pushed to the latest release, you can go there, copy the code, go to your VS Code or Code Editor or File Editor, whatever you're using, and inside Zigbee to MQTT folder, create a file with JS extension, JavaScript, and paste the custom converter there. Then go to your Zigbee to MQTT, settings page, custom converters, and here just paste or type in the name of the file for that custom converter. 
and that's it. The custom converter should now add support for unsupported device to ZigBee to MQTT. But if everything goes well, with the latest release of ZigBee to MQTT, you should already have LimpTech device available and working out of box. Go to your ZigBee to MQTT, click Start Pairing or Allow Pairing, press and hold the button on the device for 5 seconds and the device will be added to your ZigBee to MQTT. Check if everything is ok and let's go to Exposed page to see what are the options that are available for this device. If we check About page, we will see that the image of the device is wrong. Actually, there is a device that looks like this, but this is not this device. We get the information when was the device last seen, availability, is it a router or not. Router means that the other devices and devices can attach to it, which is awesome. We have Zigbee model, manufacturer, description, present sensor, it is supported, address, network address, manufacturer and model. If you click on this link, it should open up the Zigbee to MQTT device page and give you information about this device. For me, this is still not working because, as I said, it's not officially out, although there is support in the Edge version. Information about the power, is it battery powered or mains power, and is the interview completed? And when we look at exposes, we can see that we have here much more options than we had with ZHA. If you fancy, you can of course try and add everything that is available here also to ZHA by creating custom quirks. I'm not going to do that. We can see the state of the sensor, occupied or unoccupied. We have information about the illuminance in LUX, distance between the target and the sensor, motion detection distance, this means that it can detect up to 6 meters. If you need, you can reduce the values. For example, for my work desk, I can put that at one and a half meters or 150 centimeters. Let's now talk about one issue, at least for me, at least now, at least with my custom converter, and that is the present skip time. The timer that worked perfectly in a Smart Life app from Tuya unfortunately doesn't work correctly here for me. This should be a timer telling you how long the space is occupied or there is a presence in that space, but unfortunately for me, I just cannot figure out what those seconds mean because they stand still, they jump, they reset, whatever. So it's not working for me yet. Then we have option to set the motion detection sensitivity, static detection sensitivity. And with my custom converter, it cannot be set to anything less than 10 seconds, but you can set it to 10,000 seconds. That is the time between when there is no motion in the room or occupants in the room and the change in state from present to not present or from occupied to not occupied. The longer the fading time setting here is, the longer time it will take the sensor to reset to no occupancy. And of course we have link quality. But let's now go to Home Assistant and see what we can do with this sensor there. With all of my testing unfortunately I lost the ability to set fading time, motion detection distance, motion detection sensitivity and static detection sensitivity. These were all previously fields where I can drag and drop and set the values. For me, currently they are static values. So if I need to set something there, I can either send MQTT string from within Home Assistant or go back to Zigbee to MQTT page and set those settings there. Which is a shame, but I think that the problem is the custom converter because I was playing with it and I messed something up. If everything works correctly in the latest Zigbee to MQTT, you would be also able to control those settings or use those sliders. And this is how it looks for me now. We have fading time, which is that time it needs to wait before it declares that there is no occupancy. We have illuminance, we have motion detection distance, sensitivity, static sensitivity, is the motion detected or not, present skip time, which I cannot simply figure out what that is, and the target distance. This is the distance between the sensor and the object or person it currently is detecting. For example, now is detecting my hand. If we look at this example that I've created, we can see that there are two triggers. One is when it started detecting motion and the other one is when it stopped. I'm here using trigger IDs. If we wait for the sensor to reset, we can see that it triggered the motion stop detecting and it also turned off the light. Or in this example, we can see that the motion is clear and the light is turned off. If I trigger the sensor, the light will turn on and the motion is detected. If we take a closer look at the automation, it looks like this. We have trigger for the LimpTech device, 
when limb tag motion started detecting motion, duration is 0 seconds, and we added the ID which is occupied. That means that the state has turned to occupied. Then we also created additional trigger. This trigger ID, which was set by editing the edit ID here, unoccupied, once again, Olympic device and Olympic motion stopped detecting motion. Then we created action with choose and we added two options. First was condition when trigger ID by occupied, the action is turned on stream desk LED. And the option two is when triggered by unoccupied, turn off the stream desk. It's very easy to set it up by using the UI only. Of course, you can do the same thing by using the YAML. The link to this code in YAML will be down in a video description and I will be posting it on my GitHub. And by the way, all the automations for everything I'm using at my setup is always available free of charge on my GitHub repository. So check it out. But is this device actually worth buying? It all depends once again on your use case. Yes, it's a very good device. It is supported via the Smart Life app and it is also supported or will be supported out of box in the latest release of Zigbee 2MQTT. There are cheaper devices and I did video on one cheaper device a couple of weeks ago, but that device inside ZHA and Zigbee 2MQTT doesn't allow you to set up anything about it. So for that case, the device may be better, especially if you look at the price settings. On the other side, I did a video on the RoomSense IQ, which is an open source, not DIY, but community sensor that has a lot more options. So it all depends on your use case. For me, this device is staying on my desk and I will be using it with my recording setup I have set up here. If you are using ZHA, unfortunately, as you've seen, the support currently in ZHA is not au pair with the Zigbee 2MQTT. But again, this may change if somebody takes time and designs custom quirks and then creates push to main repository, this device could actually have the same functionality in ZHA that is currently having in a Zigbee to MQTT. So whatever sensor at the end you select, I hope that this sensor suits your needs. If this sensor fits your needs, fits your use, you know what automations you will be creating, the link to it will be, as I mentioned, down in the video description. And before I wrap up the video, I really would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, commented, and of course, subscribed to my channel. Thank you for all of your support. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and buying something there. I will be seeing you next time and the next video will be mail day video. Until the next time, bye bye and have fun.